Hey guys, I'm here today to present my findings on whether or not the dash F flag is atomic in various implementations of the Linux LN utility that creates links. Specifically, I cared about symbolic links, though most of what I'm going to say applies to hard links as well. Now, the man page describes dash F as removing existing destination files, but I think most people who have used this think of it naturally as overriding the existing files. And um, turns out that's actually somewhat warranted, but I'll get into that later. So the question is, you know, why might you use this? And uh, I think this image kind of sums it up. Is if you got a file that's there, and you want to replace it with something else, you want to replace it with, you know, something symbolic, a pointer to another file maybe. Um, this could be anything from changing out your Python versions to updating a Minecraft server's uh, jar or just whatever. You, you have a file and you want to replace it with a symbolic link and maybe it's already a symbolic link and maybe it's not but either way you want to replace it and you don't want to have any downtime. So um, normally what you'd use for that is you'd type ln space hyphen sf uh, the copy of the file you've got and then the the place you want to put the link. Now the concern though is uh, the question is is this an atomic operation that is if your server has a power outage in the middle of you running this, um, what what will the situation look like after you turn it back on, or whatever? If your program crashes, if LN had some crash, you know, right in the middle of running it, what could happen? And so we're going to go ahead and look into that. Um, it's important to note first off that Linux does not allow; it does not the actual system call that all the utilities use. Linux does not support atomic symbolic link clobbering. Uh, whereas you can rename, you actually can rename clobbering, and I believe you can open clobbering as well. Um, you know, if you want, if you got your file A and you want to move it to file B, but file B already exists, if you wish, you could just squelch file B um, in one step so it's never missing. It, it was the old version and then it's a new version. Likewise with open, I believe you can just, op I believe you can, you know, create a, uh, I believe you can just squelch an existing file with your new um, instance of it without ever actually having it missing. But with the symlink, the actual Linux kernel itself in the ext uh, file system does not offer the ability to do this. It, it simply does not. And so... It's interesting to see how the writers of the utilities that we use to interact with the system have uh, coped or not with this. So we'll start out with BusyBox. Uh, we'll start with the most boring and go to the most interesting. BusyBox is the one used for embedded systems. It's um, most famous nowadays for being used in Alpine Linux. Um, so we'll just go ahead and check this out. We're going to scroll down to line 143. And as you can see, it simply deletes the destination file. Then a few lines later, it go it you know goes ahead and makes the link. So this one is not atomic. You know anything could happen between it running this and running this. You know maybe between it, this line and this line, you you tried to restart the server or whatever. You know who knows. Um, but the point is between this line executing and this line executing, that file is gone. Um, likewise with FreeBSD. Their LN utility, um, as you can see on line 313, you know if you if the file already existed, and the force and you uh, and you would apply the force flag, it will delete your file, and then um, next it will attempt to create the symlink. So if something happens in that little gap of time you could end up with your destination file just kaput, just gone. There would be absolutely nothing sitting on that little weight. Um, finally, and most interestingly, we're going to check out the GNU Core Utils uh, by Richard Stallman et al. Most Linux distributions use this one. And these guys had a very clever solution. <laughs> so, um, what they did is I mean, as you can see, they've actually read the specs and whatever, so they're, you know, trying hard to, to abide by them. Uh, and they actually call this helper function that they've created in a in a separate file, 
called Force Symlink at, so that was under Force Link. And it's kind of funny. Here you can see that they've been put in an unsolvable problem. Um, as, as you can tell by the quotes around the word atomically, you know, they are. They know that this was clever. So we'll go ahead and scroll down in, to line 143 and see what they did. So they say if force if the force flag is set and the destination name file already exists, replace it quote unquote atomically. So this is kind of a half truth. What they do is you know, first they just try to create the symlink. And if it works, it works and they're good. But if it failed and you had the uh, force flag set, then it goes through this very clever little routine, and I'll, I'll go through that now. So what we've got is, same dear template creates a temporary file name, you know, that it chooses. So they create that temporary file name. Then they put a symlink at that temporary file name. So what they're doing is, this temporary file is usually hidden, it's usually got a randomized name, so it's unlikely to interfere with anything, or, you know, overwrite anything, or whatever. So, they actually put this, um, let's see, DST temp, yeah, so they put that DST temp uh, as an argument to try symlink, so they, they try to create a link at a temporary file. If that succeeded, then they will atomically rename the temporary file on top of the destination that you wanted. Now, this command never ever leaves, this command is atomic, this command never leaves DST name deleted. So, um, it's very clever how they've done this. You know, the other the other implementations just sort of accept it as given that, oh, we're gonna have to, um, we're going to have to remove existing destination files, but the, the guys who wrote the GNU core utils have the presence of mind to realize that people don't think of it as removing, they think of it as overwriting. You know, if you were, if you wanted to delete it, you would have deleted it and replaced it. If you're using the dash F flag, it's because you want it to be replaced in place safely. And these guys actually coded in that use case with some very clever. Now this unlink, don't let that um, fool you. This is just removing the temporary file so that it doesn't clutter up afterwards if it failed. But yeah, so if, if Alpine, Linux, or FreeBSD had a, a poorly timed power outage, your destination file would be gone. Which, imagine if that were a vital file to system startup, then you'd be in trouble. But if you're using the GNU LN, the worst thing that could happen is you end up with a junk symlink sitting in the folder. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed and found this informative.